Hello design lovers, it's Ashley Childers and I am so excited for today's video because we are starting a new series called Ask Ashley. This is going to be the spot where I get to answer all of the design questions we get from you guys through YouTube and social media and email. You guys have got some great questions and I cannot wait to answer them. I know you're going to love today's video, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get more weekly design goodness as we drop a new video every Saturday. And if you have got a design question you'd like for me to answer, be sure to drop it below in the comments and I will get to it next time on Ask Ashley. Let's jump right in to some of the questions that we have got from viewers. The first question was from our 2023 design trends video and the question is, we live in a log mountain home. It's beautiful but dark. We have a mohair massive couch, but I love Indian brass. Any ideas? Okay, first and foremost, mohair is one of my very favorite upholstery choices for sofas and chairs. Honestly, anything. I love mohair. It is beautiful and it is super functional because it is so hard wearing. Like it just doesn't show wear and tear. So invest in mohair if you can. It's one of my very favorite fabrics. Now, in addition to that, I don't really know what color the mohair sofa is. So if it's a dark color and you're wanting to bring a little bit more lightness to the space, I say add some light throw pillows and maybe a throw blanket. You can really kind of bring a lightness to a space through small decorative pieces such as throw pillows and throw blankets. Now on to the Indian brass inlay. I love using pops of brass in a space. And what I would suggest is if you want to add in some brass accessories to your space, just make sure to choose some that have some character and patina. You don't want to introduce probably really highly polished new brass. You wanna look for pieces that have character and warmth and are going to pair beautifully in your cozy mountain log cabin space. We're gonna move on to the next question and this question is from the 2023 Kitchen Design Trends video. The question is, I have a small area where I could put a breakfast niche, but I don't know how to design it. Can you give me ideas? Oh, I love breakfast niches first and foremost. It's one of my favorite things to add into a kitchen when I am designing one for a client. So my suggestions would be take into consideration the dining table or breakfast table that you want to use as well as if you already have existing dining chairs that you're going to be using. So for a breakfast area, a lot of times we see 48 inch round tables, even sometimes 60 inch round tables if the space is a little bit larger. So you're going to want to make sure that the area surrounding it, say the banquette, is designed properly and in proportion to the table that you're using. Another pro tip is to measure the height of your dining chair seats if you are going to be combining dining chairs and a banquette because you're going to want the seat heights of both to be the same. So a lot of times with an upholstered chair, we're going to measure to what is called the crown and that is kind of the top of the arch of the upholstered seat. Now the seat compresses ever so slightly as you sit into it, but if you're going to be upholstering your banquette, you're going to want to make sure that the crown height is the same as the chair crown. If your dining chairs are not upholstered and they say they have a wooden seat, then you would simply measure up to the top of the wooden seat and make sure that your banquette is also at the same height. Good luck with your breakfast niche. It's one of my favorite things to add. It's going to cozy up your space so much. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And actually we have lots of questions from our paint trends video. And the first one is, we painted the main rooms and walls in our house, Sherwin Williams Neutral Ground a couple of years ago and I love it. Our current project is to have our kitchen cabinets painted. I have been looking at Sherwin Williams, 
West Highland White or Greek Villa with the island painted urbane bronze. Do you think that will work or am I off a shade for the cabinets? I actually think either one of those choices would work. I'd also look at Dover White. I have used Dover White paired with neutral ground and urbane bronze in a design project and it actually turned out really, really good so I can attest that those colors look beautiful together. Okay, moving on to the next question. It is, would you combine a blue pastel with warm light walls in the same room? Would you color the ceiling in the same color of the walls, especially in a small space or keep it white? Okay, I think you could go warm on your walls as long as the blue pastel is not too cool. Blues a lot of times have varying um, undertones, so I would make sure and choose a blue that has a more warm undertone. As for the ceiling, a lot of times what I like to do with ceiling colors is take the wall color up to the ceiling, but cut it by about 30% of white. So add white into your wall color and that way you get the same continuity of color onto the ceiling, but it feels lighter and more airy because you have added white to it. Okay, moving on, let's go to the next question, and it is, I have a conundrum. Our media room has mahogany paneling and a chair rail. What color should I paint the walls, dark and moody or warm neutral? Okay, well, that's a personal preference, honestly, but my suggestion, or I have a few, um, I actually just painted the media room in our home, Dark Olive by Benjamin Moore, and it is probably my favorite color in our entire home. I absolutely love it. It's cozy and welcoming and it would pair beautifully with mahogany paneling for sure. If you wanna go lighter, I would look at Sherwin-Williams Shiitake. It's a really beautiful color and it will also look great with mahogany paneling. And if you want another option, try Benjamin Moore Stone Hearth. It will also look beautiful with the mahogany paneling. Good luck with your media room. Okay, we got lots and lots of questions about the colors that are in my home. And before I tell you all the colors that we use, I want to explain something about our home. First of all, <laughs> we get questions about the colors and then we also sometimes get ugly comments that my home is white and it's boring, whatever. First of all, a lot of times on camera, my home looks really, really white, but it's actually not in person. It just kind of reads that way on camera on YouTube. Secondly, uh, the main area in my home is white. Um, I chose a really beautiful white color for the walls because we do tons of photography for my home furnishings brand in my home. We do a lot of styled shoots. We shoot at least twice a month in my home for brand photography and for videography. So having a white backdrop was really important to me because that means I don't have to repaint all the time and all of my furnishings look beautiful with a white backdrop. So there is a little bit of background to why I chose white for the main area of my home. Okay, so the first question we got pertaining to the colors of my home was, I love the wall color behind you with the beautiful sideboard in front. What is that color and who makes it? Also, the color of the door in your hallway facing the living room. Okay, well, so first of all, the wall color in my home is Delicate White by Pittsburgh Paint, and I chose it because it's a really beautiful white that is not too cool and not too yellow. It's very middle of the road, and it pairs well with both cool tones and warm tones. So if you're looking for a just a true, beautiful, soft white, Delicate White by Pittsburgh Paint is a winner for sure. Now, as far as my interior doors go, we painted the interior doors in our home Sea Haze by Benjamin Moore. It's a beautiful gray color. I love that it also pairs really well with other tones and it's a little bit of a chameleon color. Okay, moving on to the next paint question. This question is, may you please share which of the neutral colors would go with honey oak floors? Really appreciate help on this. Okay, there's a couple of options I would suggest. First of all, Benjamin Moore Swiss Coffee and White Dove. Those are both gonna be beautiful with honey oak floors. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper in color, I would say Sherwin-Williams Shiitake or Neutral Ground. Those are also going to pair beautifully with your floors and be a classic, gorgeous color on your walls. Okay, our next question regarding paint is, painting my home in pale oak. 
I'll be using pastels in my guest bath and laundry. I'm a little scared, LOL. I prefer light and airy. What color white trim do you recommend? And I would say if you're using pale oak, I would pair Chantilly lace with it. It's going to look beautiful and give you that light and airy feeling you're looking for. Okay, next question. I have an east facing window in my living slash dining room. Is it better? to paint with a warm neutral or cool in a low light room. I also have medium wood furniture. Okay, this is personal preference. If you are drawn to warm colors, then I say go warm on your walls. If you really love the feeling of cool tones, then go cool. Um, I actually love both paired with wood tones, so it's really personal preference, and I know that's not an answer, but remember, your home is a reflection of your personal style. It should be designed to make you feel good and inspired. Make a choice that you love when it comes to paint color. Okay, moving on to the next question. I wanted my cabinets dark, so I'll go with the same color as the walls in the lounge. And since I'm doing lowers only, I think it'll be fabulous. Yes, it will be fabulous. I love doing multi-tone paint colors on kitchen cabinetry, and I especially love going darker on lowers or islands. Next part of the question is, also where do I stop the dark color when I get to the hall that connects to the foyer? It'll look odd if I just stop, right? Okay, so when you are transitioning paint colors from one space to the next, my rule of thumb is to stop the color at a door casing or trim. This just gives you a, a like natural stopping point. If you do not have a door casing or trim where you can stop the paint, I would say always stop the paint on a corner if you can. So say you've got one room right here, the wall is here and this is a darker color and you wanna go lighter in the adjacent room, stop it on the 90 degree angle or on the corner. Okay, last part of this question is, so if inside of the primary room door is black, can the other side be the color of the rest of the doors in the house? Absolutely. When you are talking about painting a door or door casing or trim or whatever, it really can be room by room. It's a room decision based on the paint that you have on the wall in that room and the accessories and the furnishings. So like example would be in my home, my primary bedroom is a really beautiful kind of um, a mocha color on the walls. We lime washed the walls and then I did mocha on all of the trim and the door casings and the inside of my primary bedroom door. So everything is uniform in there and feels really cozy and good. But on the outside of my primary bedroom door, it's the sea haze color that the rest of the doors in my house are painted. So don't feel like both sides of the door have to be the same. They totally don't. They need to be whatever color that the room that they are facing calls for. Okay, we have one more question about the wall color in my home and it is, what white paint do you recommend? I'd like a finish similar to your great room. Who knew there are so many different tones of brilliant white? And like I said earlier, my walls are delicate white by Pittsburgh Paint and it's a beautiful white. Okay, here's a question and it is, my house is small, which colors should I use on the wall? Well, goodness. I need more information than that, but I'm happy to help you choose paint colors. But remember, paint colors are so contingent on what else is going on in your home. What flooring do you have? What tones do you have in your furnishings as far as like your case goods and your upholstery? Um, the light that you get in the home, all of those things need to come into consideration when you are choosing paint colors. But if you would like to send me a little bit more information, I'm happy to give you suggestions. Okay, next question was, would it be wrong to use Minute Mauve and Balance Beige together? And absolutely not. I love both of those colors and I think they would be beautiful together. I hope all of my my answers are helping you guys out and remember to drop your questions below in the comments so that I can answer them on the next round of Ask Ashley. Also, I forgot to tell you, I am actually in sunny California this week with my family. We are on spring break and we're having a blast. We're taking my son to visit a few more colleges before he makes his final decision on where he will be attending next year. Okay, here we go. Let's move on to a few more questions about paint. 
The next one is, I honestly cannot make a decision. I have crippling FOMO. I have Maestral Blue from Benjamin Moore on my lower cabinets in the kitchen and Chantilly Lace on the uppers. I live in an open loft style condo, so one long wall I'm creating to be my major color and I have been looking at paint since November, LOL. One wall. Thanks for the great ideas. Now someone call my shrink. Okay, well, paint choices can be hard. I totally get it. I would say Stonington Gray or Oxford White for your walls. Both of those colors are going to pair so well with the Maestral Blue on your cabinetry. And that color is very bold and I love that choice. So I think that adding in one of those more chill colors on the wall might be a really good decision. If you want to keep the blue theme going, I would say either Lake Placid or Sea View. They are both beautiful blue colors and are going to pick up the tones in the cabinetry, but also um, they're a little bit softer blue, so you can mix those together. Good luck with your condo. Okay, next question. I am a widow and living in a little house on the Gulf, so I am looking for serene light colors that do not take away from the view. I am going for a simple white with warm undertones. I have been buying furniture in the mid-mod style with white with a shell pink undertone, very clean and uncluttered. Okay, my suggestion would be Seagull from Pittsburgh Paint. It is my favorite white with a blush undertone. It's beautiful and I know this because I actually had my primary bedroom in my home painted that color for five years and I still have that color on the walls in my daughter's bedroom. I love it. I think it's beautiful, soft, feminine, and a gorgeous warm white with pink undertones. Okay, so now we are going to move on to some of the questions that we got from our custom building trends video. Okay, so here is the first one. Oh my goodness, Ashley, I'm going to love this series. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> this video was insightful and thoroughly explained. Love it. Niches and windows are my favorite architectural elements. Mine too. I'm so excited to have found your channel at this time of my life because we are building our family home and I would love inspiration from you. Can you please do a video on different tile choices? we can use throughout the house. And yes, we're gonna do that. Um, we're working on a video about tile and flooring choices and how to make good design decisions when it comes to those building materials. Okay, let's move on. Uh, it says, so after that it says, I was considering a honed travertine for the house. And my question to you is, can I have it flow into the bathroom and kitchen? No wood or carpet flooring, just tile on both levels. Should I break it up on the stairs or different rooms? Then then for the bathrooms, I'll have the walls mainly tile. So how do I flow a different tile on the walls to complement the floors or should I take the travertine up the walls? Okay, first of all, yes, travertine everywhere. That's totally fine. You don't have to mix in carpet. You don't have to mix in wood. If you love travertine and you want it on both levels of your home, I say go for it. Travertine is beautiful and classic and will look gorgeous for years to come. I also love the tonal texture um, that travertine gives to a home. It's very warm and inviting and feels wonderful underfoot. When it comes to the bathroom and you're wanting to mix in another type of tile on the walls in the bathroom, my suggestion would be take the travertine up slightly onto the walls like you are creating a base molding out of the travertine. You could do it eight inches or 10 inches or four inches, maybe not four inches, I would suggest either six to 10 inches so that you create that look of a base molding with travertine and it connects to the floor and then you can take your different tile on the wall. That's just gonna create a really cohesive look and it's also a very functional application for a bathroom. Okay, the next part of that question says, lastly in the kitchen, I was thinking white countertops and island, dark lower cabinets and again, the travertine floors. What should I do for backsplash? The material of the counters, marble or a tile? If tile, what do you think would look good? The color theme will be beige from the floors, black, white, and gray. Okay, I love running the countertop material up onto the backsplash, and I like to actually do a full height splash, meaning it the countertop material doesn't just stop at a small backsplash, which is usually like four inches. We oftentimes take it all the way up to the bottom side of the upper cabinetry. Or if it's like 
you're doing it above a range, I'll go all the way up to the bottom side of the hood. So I love doing that. My only suggestion would be if you are choosing a marble countertop, go a little bit bolder with your choice. I like seeing uh, the countertop go up if it has beautiful veining in it. If you're using, say, a quartz material and it's mainly white, a lot of times that can be a little bit boring. If you're taking it up the splash, and I would suggest doing tile in that instance. And if you do wanna go tile in your backsplash, I would say just make sure you're choosing something that's beautiful and handmade and picks up the colors that you are using in the other spaces of your home. It can kind of tie everything together. I hope that helps. Okay, next question. Uh, this one was pertaining to a little quick home tour we did at one of our design build projects and they asked how big the home was and let me just tell you that one's a big one it's 12,000 square feet and stay tuned friends because we are doing an entire video tour of that home and I cannot wait to show you all of the gorgeous details we packed into that beautiful project okay we're gonna move on to some questions that we got from our kitchen styling video and the first one is beautiful kitchen but not everyone has a kitchen as big as yours I have an all-white kitchen kitchen as yours, but no island and limited counter space. It would be nice to give ideas for those people like me. Okay, I totally understand. I have a large kitchen. Um, actually, funny enough, <laughs> where I live, my kitchen isn't that large. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of my friends have much larger kitchens than I do, but I know that it kind of depends on where you live and what your home is like. If you're in a small bungalow or an apartment, your kitchen's gonna be smaller than mine. So my suggestion when styling a smaller kitchen would be to just add in some interest through maybe mixing materials. I always like to go back to the four design principles of interest, scale, repetition, and movement when I am talking about styling a space. So mixing materials is going to give you that interest that I'm speaking to. Maybe bring in a vintage cutting board like I did in my home. You can do that no matter the size of your space or a really fun little vintage crock next to your range or stove that you have some wooden uh, you know, cooking utensils in or bring in some live greenery with a potted plant or some fresh flowers. Those are things that you can add in that don't require a super large kitchen, just adding some personality and some live elements and even a touch of your personality. Maybe you have a small piece of art that's sentimental to you and you can prop it up against your backsplash, something like that. When you are thinking about styling your kitchen, it needs to be functional, but it also needs to bring you joy. Every room in your home should be a reflection of your personal style and your kitchen is no different. I also want to speak to the fact that, like I said earlier, a lot of times my home looks on camera like it is all white, but my kitchen's actually not all white at all. <laughs> the um, walls are delicate white, like the rest of the main area of my home, but the the cabinets are Benjamin Moore Gray Owl, and our island is sea haze, so it's a slightly darker color. And I love those colors. They're very bright and airy, but they're not all white. So we have some tonal differences when you're in the kitchen. I know sometimes it might feel like it's all white on camera, but it's actually not. Um, also, something to speak to about my kitchen is that I use a really beautiful honed marble countertops, and I chose my cabinetry color and the colors in my kitchen based on those countertops because they were the jumping off point for my entire space. In addition to the suggestions I made about styling your kitchen, another thing that you can do to add a lot of warmth and personality to your kitchen is a rug, and it doesn't have to be huge. Your kitchen doesn't have to be big. You can do a small rug in front of your sink or a runner in front of your range or however a rug would play into your space best, but remember, rugs are going to add texture and personality and color to a space and you can find a rug to fit your personality and your style. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed our very first video in the Ask Ashley series. And if you have got any design questions that you want me to answer in the next video, make sure and drop them below in the comments. If you love all things design, then follow us over on TikTok and Instagram at Ashley Children's Home to get a little sneak peek at my daily design adventures. And if you want even 
even more designer tips and tricks, you're going to want to check out this playlist next. As always, I'm Ashley Childers. Thank you for watching and remember, good design is for everyone. So create a home that inspires you, have fun styling and decorating your spaces and fall in love with where you live one room at a time.